Lisa and I welcome Sierra Sill to our podcast. Got a grumpy old man in your life? Change that. Okay, not that way. <laughs> Sierra Sill Natural Mineral Joint Pain Relief with a money back guarantee at Shoppers, London Drugs, and the best health food stores. Head over to sierrasill.com. S I E R R A S I L dot com. Use your code G F and get 10% off your purchase. Hello there. I'm Lisa Brandt. And I'm Erin Davis, and this is a, we don't want to call it a bonus, because that sounds like there's something special, like a prize to be opened. This is an extra edition of Gracefully and Frankly, because frankly, and hopefully with some grace, we've got a lot in our hearts and on our minds today with the passing of Matthew Perry, and we thought, well, I've got to talk with Lisa about this. Yeah. And so we're texting back and forth, and, and it just seemed like something that we might want to share. Right. So thanks for doing this today, Lisa. Well, I mean, if you're here, I'm here. So there's a lot to, as they say, unpack, but also a lot of feelings around this guy who you and I, did you meet him? I never met him. I never met him. No. no. But we don't have to have met him to have welcomed him into our lives. So it's a stew of things surrounding Matthew Perry that we'll get into and just the feeling surrounding it. it. This is a hard one. It absolutely is. And I found this post on threads where the everywhereist, she said, hi, if the death of an actor who you never met feels personal and sad, there's nothing weird or silly about that. It's a testament to their work. It means they succeeded at their jobs and connected with their audience. And that's actually a lovely thing. So let us embark on what we hope is a lovely thing. And I'm not feeling too lovely about it. And I know you aren't either. But we do want to thank Envy Pillow for making this possible today, for being alongside us through all of our chats about funny things, real things, life things, in gracefully and frankly. Go to EnvyPillow.com. Use the code GF for 10% off. Okay, Lisa, where to start? What what do you want to say first? I know you read Matthew's book when it came out a year ago, basically, this week. Yeah. You read it the day it came out. Oh, I did. I had it on pre-order. And so, you know, I read everything on my Kobo if I don't get it in hardcover. And I dove right in. Derek read it too. It was so raw and deep. And this is a guy who has gone through all the work. And as fellow addicts, you and I know that there's a lot of work to be done. You don't just quit. You have to do the deep, introspective, painful work to find out why you were doing what you were doing to numb yourself. And he did it. And he explained it so, so well. He did. And now I saw the Diane Sawyer interview and so many pieces that he had done, including one with the LA Times in which he said how he wanted to be remembered. And they really had to kind of pull it out of him. And he said, as a guy who lived life, loved well, lived well and helped people that running into me was a good thing and not something bad. And he made it a point to help people. And that's what he most wanted to be remembered for. And of course, it will always be friends, friends, yeah. friends, friends, friends. And, right. and that's okay. I mean, he did some great movie turns as well in the whole nine yards and then the whole 10 yards and TV, West Wing and The Good Wife and The Odd Couple mm -hmm. with Thomas Lennon, which uh, which I liked. And also he did a sports talk radio character that didn't go on long enough because maybe they didn't capture the same easy, comfortable humor, the natural humor that Matthew Perry had and had displayed for all those seasons on Friends. Well, you find out in the book, too, he talks about how he wants to be remembered in the book. And he says, I know it's going to be Friends, but I would like to be remembered for helping people. And he did help so many people. He had Perry House sort of rehab center. Do you know he was in detox 65 times? Oh. He did rehab 15 times. He figures he spent $9 million on rehab. And, of course, more on the drugs. But a lot of people will look at a guy like Matthew Perry and say, just stop. You've got everything in the world. Well, they don't understand addiction. They don't understand what it means to be that tortured soul from whatever happened in your life or thoughts that go through your head that you just have to numb them and keep them down in order for you to function. And he didn't get long enough. And this is another reason why I think it's hitting us so hard. 
as mm. a person who is an addict, you know, we never say we're a former addict. We say we're a recovering addict. Right. He really only stepped out of being a, a functioning, active addict in 2021. And I think it's hitting us. He didn't get enough time. And, and whether it's, but for the grace of God go I, or whether it's just, man, he went through so much hell. I wanted to see him grow old. I mean, who didn't? I know. But from an addiction point of view, you know what I mean? I absolutely do. And that's part of what makes me angry is the unfairness of that, which you point out so beautifully. But also is that people automatically assumed he relapsed. And that is so unfair. It's so unfair to have that connection. And it was why I didn't come out with my alcoholism until well after I'd left radio, because I always figured that if I ever screwed something up on the radio and it was my fault and it wasn't due to alcohol, people would go, well, that happened because she was drunk or she was hungover or whatever. Mm. Because as they say, nature abhors a vacuum. So does the truth. And people will automatically put two and two together and come up with what looks simplest. And I did gently correct a few people on my Facebook page when it came out on Saturday night. They had automatically, oh, I thought he had beaten it. Well, you know what? You never beat it. He was winning. But no one says that this means he picked up again. Nobody. Yeah, you're right. People just jump to the first conclusion. He could have been bitten by a poisonous spider or, you know, anything could have happened to the man like it could happen to any of us. But they only go with what they know. And P this is one of the problems with being famous. And one of the reasons I would never want to be super famous. I'll take the money. But people only know your headlines. And even if they're wrong, like if, if some misinformation about you comes out, you're stuck with that forever anyway, because there will be people who won't read the follow up or the follow up will be in little tiny thing. And so, yeah, this was his life and this was the headline of who he was. I've noticed that there are headlines today, only prescription medicine found at Matthew Perry's and on and on like that, because people are still skeptical. They still want to know, well, OK, you might have been in the jacuzzi and just played pickleball, but was he on something? You know, yeah, I think that people forget or never knew the trauma to his heart, including it having stopped for five minutes when he yeah. was in Switzerland. Yeah. He says that someone did CPR on him for five minutes. And then he dryly adds, if I wasn't from that TV show, would they have stopped at three? And he never understood, as he said, probably in the book, but definitely to Diane Sawyer. And you can enlighten us on this. Why did he survive? that time of trauma in the same room with three or four other people who did not right. that night. And he right. never understood. Yeah. And the doctors saying that nobody comes back from this and he came back and, you know, maybe it was to have that time to put out the book and help more people and share his story because there's no question that learning what Matthew Perry went through in his life and the demons that haunted him, despite everything that was going on, would help people. Because you feel like you're alone when you're going through that. You feel like nobody in the world has experienced it to the degree that you're experiencing it or the way you're experiencing it or whatever. And the more people say, yeah, I know that. I've, I've been through that too. The more it helps. I think he helped a lot of people with his book. There's also the shame that I think I can talk about. I don't know if you can, but certainly Matthew Perry, I would imagine, felt shame at having the world on a platter and still going through this self-destructive behavior. And you don't want to come out so that everybody says, oh, poor little rich boy, poor you. Why don't you try having real problems? Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, there's this dichotomy of a humanitarian crisis going on not just in the Middle East, but, you know, it happens every day in so many places that we never talk or read about. And you go, yeah, OK, so some guy died in his hot tub in Hollywood or wherever he was. It isn't the big picture. It's how this death affects each of us. And yes, mm -hmm. there are people suffering great, great injustices and sadness and devastation right now. This is just a moment. And uh, because he was part of our lives. I don't know about you, Aaron, but my brain 
can look at two different things. And when I say I don't know about you, I'm joking. Um, can look at two different <laughs> things in two different ways and understand that they're different. Peace and kindness. And that is Matthew Perry. I mean, all of these friends of his would say he was kind before they said he was funny. That was their headline, right? Mm. Something else that just feels like daggers about this is knowing a little tiny bit about his family and the fact that he was born in Massachusetts to Suzanne Perry and her husband John and then Suzanne moved to Canada and was with Keith Morrison and is still. And that's where Matthew went to school in Ottawa and Montreal for a time. So for many of us, he is one of us. He was a Blue Jays fan. He was a, a complete hockey fanatic as well. And it's one of those things he's tied in yeah. with our prime minister and they had schoolyard fun and some possible dust ups, who knows what stories to believe. But because he was one of us and I'm thinking about his parents, you know, I adore Keith Morrison yes, from Dateline. Yes. And the thing about this that struck me when I first heard it was for so many years, for all of those years of relapsing and rehab and being at the brink of death, they waited for that phone call. They waited for the phone call that said Matthew had died, had succumbed, was no longer with them. And I would imagine there was a time that they had enjoyed most recently of a bit of letting that down, of releasing their shoulders and not jumping every time one of their phones pinged or rang. And just to have had that peace for so short a time is so unfair to his family. That's another element of it. Oh, yeah, I can't imagine the shock of it. Um, you know what it's like to lose a child. Yeah. Um, it's something that nobody should say a word about unless they've gone through it. So I'm going to stop talking right now, except to say that um, it is a parent's worst nightmare. And it doesn't matter if your kid is 24 or 54. As far as the parent's concerned, that's your child. And... My mom used to say that to me when she'd ask me stuff about that I just thought was inappropriate for, for her to ask a 50-something. And she's like, you're always going to be my kid. Aww. You know, I don't know how you how you console someone like that. Okay, yeah, he lived to the age of 54. He had tons of money. He made the world his playground. But he was really only aware and awake since 2021. Not long enough. I would love to end this on a positive note. You and I always have so many laughs on Gracefully and Frankly. And, and again, I'm going to thank you for answering the call and just hopping in here to record this today because it just feels so fresh and raw. But, oh, I was so incensed because it took the anti-vaxxers not even 10 minutes to jump on and say it was because he was proud and loud right. about his vaccinations. Lisa, I'm just, it makes as much sense as an anti-hot tub lobby jumping on and saying, never get in a hot tub. You see how many fatalities there are, but but they don't see it that right. way. Or pickleball, the anti-pickleball lobby. You yes. know, don't play pickleball because it's uh, it might kill you. I agree. But why do you read them, Aaron? Why, 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 why? I just don't let that stuff in. Is this like Twitter or where are you seeing this? Well, it was mostly that hellhole. Yeah, I haven't moved away from there because I love the number of followers. And it's a way to get our message out and say, hey, gracefully and frankly is dropping or, or whatever else. I still use it for that connection and other connections too. But I read the comments, especially on my sites, because I will not have them there. I delete them. And I'm proud of deleting right. them because you are not going to be the cat turd in my sandbox. Right. So these are comments on your posts. Uh, just a few. There were a very few because I noticed on my Facebook that people had kind of randomly shared the news because I got it on Saturday night when you sent me the message. And I went, what? Oh, no. Because you went, oh, no, Matthew Perry. And I went, oh, no. And I sent you back four four letter words. And yeah, it was true. 
but this isn't about no. me and I don't want to make it about me, but I'm just saying that in my sandbox that gets deleted because you're not going to do It's funny. This. I very rarely attract the Eddie Vaxxers and those kind of people, but it did happen to me maybe two months ago. And it was like, whoa, <laughs> I mean, if this happened every day where suddenly 50 people are piling on you, I don't know that I would be there much longer. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. So you're taking care of people in your sandbox. Okay. I am. And it's infuriating. There are no autopsy results at the time of this recording. And, you know, there's really no reason we should know them except that he lived his life so openly, so publicly, and there will be people who never believe it. And that's just their mental illness. Yeah, I don't care that those people will never believe it. I've decided that there's a bit of a line between us and them, and I never wanted to do this. But I just, I've started just outwardly dismissing people who say stupid, random, dumb things and aren't informed. Unless there's somebody I have a previous relationship with and they've just made a mistake or whatever, I'll be gentle. Other than that, it's like mute, mute, block, block, mute, 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 mute. Think whatever you want. You know, there are people who think how Elvis is alive. I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I hate to do that, but I'm kind of doing this. If you're not smart enough to even bother checking for a fact anywhere before you start spewing this crap out, I'm sorry, you're just not one of us. <laughs> we need you to go to an island, a bad island. There was a meme that has resonated with me and I haven't used it, but we live in a time where intelligent people are being silenced so that stupid people won't be offended. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry that this kind of took a left turn into the idiocy <laughs> of the internet, but please don't believe anything unless it comes from his official spokespeople or from the coroner yeah. or from someone who knows don't believe what you read unless it is official from a believable source because it's just unfair to his legacy, to his life, and to his family. Most of all, my heart is just broken for his family. And, and I began this segment yeah. talking about that, the fact that they maybe let down their guard in thinking that they were going to get that phone call and then it happened. That advice you just gave about checking sources actually goes for everything on the internet. So let's just make that a blanket statement that, you know, make sure you know where you're getting it from. Uh, we'd be all so much better off. To wrap up here on this episode, this extra episode, the one where we talk about Matthew Perry, did you have a favorite right. friends episode? I. I watched it kind of passively. I wasn't the one who watched them over and over and over and over again, like like some people. And the, friends got people through COVID, a lot yeah. of them. You know, it was just, they were there for I them. I never missed an episode. I missed one airing live. Now, that tells you, A, how boring my life was, and B, how devoted I was to the show. I loved Friends. It was my thing. I thought there was going to be a lineup at Toys R Us when they released the Friends trivia game. So I got there early mm -hmm. and greeted a whole stand of trivia games and nobody there waiting for them. Um, <laughs> and I've also got my ass kicked at it, which is which surprised me because I do know a lot, but I don't know as much as some other people I know. It's just one of those things where you can go back and it's like comfort food, even if you know what's going to happen. It's like Seinfeld in that way. And, mm -hmm. and other sitcoms like that where you go, oh, yeah, this is the one where Monica puts the turkey on her head to dance for oh, yeah. Chandler, who says, <laughs> I love you for the first time. And oh, I just I just got a shiver thinking about that. Mm. Yeah, it's going to take on a different tone. But now I feel like going on a friend's binge. You and so many other yeah. people. And it will be with a heavy heart that we watch that. But you know what? I listened to the Beatles knowing that John and George are gone and the music still gives me joy. So I guess we thank him for a body of work and that easy, comfortably sarcastic intonation, a, a way that, as Ben Stiller said, Gen X imitated him. Could he have been any better? And the answer was no. If you read his book, which I'm sure you're going to do, and so many people are going to do, he brought that from school in Ottawa. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just that he delivered it well. He brought that whole cadence with him. And uh, could we be any more sad? No, we couldn't. Thank you so much for joining us today, remembering Matthew Perry and 
all of the elements, I just have felt so sick and so sad and so angry, and I, I had to get it out. And it's just because he didn't get enough time. He didn't get enough time to help others and in his sobriety. And I curse anyone who jumps on his death to further their cause. It's just not fair. Try and be fair. Try and be kind. And try and be a friend like Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, it's always great to talk to you. And now I get to do it again this week. Yeah. We'll be back with a regular episode of Gracefully and Frankly on Thursday. Bye-bye for now.